Hi everyone, um, my name is Cindy Bergloff and I'm the Program Coordinator at Walker's Point Center for the Arts. This week you're going to be joining me for Grounded in Nature Week where we're going to be doing a couple of activities around um, getting comfortable around nature and learning about how art and nature go hand in hand. Um, and the first activity that you all will be doing with me is an activity that's very special to my heart. Um, it's called making seed balls or seed bombs. Both are the same thing, you'll hear it both used. Um, and for this activity, what you are going to need is the small ball of clay. Um, it is the darker, kind of more tan clay, not the red one, but the small tan clay. You're gonna need one of your seed packets, and then you're gonna need to go outside and you're gonna have to dig up some dirt, or if you have an old plant pot where maybe the plants didn't do so well, um, you can pick some of the dirt out of there, pretty much anywhere where you can find soft and kind of crummy dirt. And you're also gonna need some water. So, I'm gonna put in the description, um, each of the seed packets has a different number on it, and that means that there's different seeds in it. So I'll make sure that in the description box that you're going to see um, what seeds there are in each of the boxes. In addition, um, I'll make sure that that is also posted in your Google Classroom. So the first step that you're going to need for today's activity is to take the clay out of the bag. And you're gonna set it to the side. Sorry, my allergies are bothering me today. So, and then you're gonna need to have your dirt ready and you're gonna take out some of these seeds. So, usually with your packets of seeds, you can get about five to six little seed balls out of it. So you're gonna set the seeds in a little container and make sure that wherever you're working with this, um, working on these seed balls, that you put them in a place that it's going to be, um, that you can clean up really easily because this can become a really messy activity. So, the seeds that I chose were the um, marigold and the wheat seeds, or the, I think it's wheatgrass, I want to say. So the marigold seeds look like little flower petals. And then the other seeds are just little itty bitty grains. So I set those to the side here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the clay. So about a pinch of it. Um, and I'm gonna pick up some dirt. And I'm gonna put that together in my hands. And I'm gonna grab some water and start kneading it together. And you wanna just keep doing this until it becomes a solid ball. You don't want any rocks in here and you want to break up any clumps of like really tough dirt. So you're going to want this so it just stays together. So if you're finding that your pieces are falling apart, add a little more clay and just keep grabbing back and forth. Sometimes, um, if you're living, if you live somewhere that's close to a beach or if you live close to a river, um, you can actually go by the river, the beach, and pull some of the dirt from over there as well and use some of that dirt in your mixture because that dirt has clay in it. Um, I'm also going to have um, Mr. Oscar post an extra video, you all get a bonus video this week, of how to make your own clay. Um, so see how with the dirt, oh, almost there, need a little more dirt here to make it a little more dry and make sure that the plants will be able to grow from this ball. When I'm making these, I like to listen to music or podcasts. Sometimes I'll even put my uh, 
I'm taking classes right now, so sometimes I'll even put my class video lecture on and listen to that. So now, mixed together, let's see here. Um, looks like it finally adjusted. So mixed together, you have this ball here. So now that we have a solid ball, what I'm gonna do is add a little more water to that so it's just gonna stick a little more because adding in the dirt it dries it out so I'm gonna dip that ball real quick in the water just a second and then I'm gonna grab some of those seeds maybe four to five of each of the seeds and put them into the ball so um, you can put them just on top and stick them there um, you can choose to put both kinds of seeds in a one seed ball or you could separate them one by one um, and you start mixing that up. If you're also trying to get different textures for these seed balls, you can try finding freshly cut grass or, um, hmm, I don't know, maybe some leaves. And you can mix that in and just see what happens with your experiments. Let me know if you decide to do that in the comments. So, after I've added those in, I'm going to put this, I'm going to roll it up nice and good. And as you can see, let's see if I can get this to focus here. Oh, there we go. So, as you can see, you can see a little bit of the petals and you have the seeds in there. So. After you've made a few of these, um, I will give you your next instructions. So take the next four to five minutes and work on making a bunch of these seeds, okay? So I'm gonna make you hit pause here and go make some seed balls. Okay. Welcome back. Um, I'm gonna keep working on my seed balls as I'm talking to you all. So, while you all are, now that you all have a bunch of seed balls made up, what I want you to do is go outside and put those seed balls out in a sunny area. Um, don't get them wet, just find a place, maybe even a sunny windowsill, so it doesn't even have to be outside a place where it can get air circulation um, and a place where it can dry in the sunshine. Um, some things that I find are really helpful when you're helping it dry is placing it on a plastic bag or not a plastic bag, sorry, a paper bag um, or some cardboard because um, you want to make sure that it can dry out before you use it. I gave you several different kinds of seeds and each of the seeds can be used in a different season. So the marigold seeds can be used pretty much from all of spring into fall. And here at WPCA, we actually use seeds. Um, we, we use marigold seeds to plant marigolds in our garden. So during our Dia de los Muertos celebration, um, we can put marigolds all over WPCA's gallery. Um, we also have corn, beans, and squash seeds in one of the baggies, and I included those for you all so then next spring, you should save those, so next spring you can plant those and have a very special combination of plants. Um, because the corn, beans, and squash um, in my community, so I come from the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa Indians, um, I'm Native American, I come from one of the tribes in Michigan. And um, over there, we have a teaching about what's called the Three Sisters. And the Three Sisters are plants that work together to help each other grow. So the way it works is the corn um, grows tall and strong. It has really deep roots, um, but because it grows so tall and strong, it pulls a lot of nutrients from the soil. So that's where our second plant comes in, the beans. And the beans, um, they're really helpful because they, um, they put nitrogen in the soil. And nitrogen is a nutrient that all plants need. Um, so they put that nitrogen deep in the soil and start to put nutrients back in the soil. But when they're growing, they need something to grow up. Um, and because corn is a really tall plant and it's really strong, it can actually support the weight of other plants on it. 
So you have that corn and those beans that are growing together. But the thing is, a lot of animals, not just humans, but a lot of animals like beans and corn. So they need an extra helper, which is called squash. So squash are plants like cantaloupe, watermelon, pumpkins, um, and they're a kind of plant that can reside on the ground and it grows around the roots of other plants. It can climb up walls or fences, but when it's around corns and beans, um, it actually will protect the roots and keep all the critters away from it because squash has a really prickly end or a prickly stalk, like the vining of it does, is prickly. Um, and I'll make sure to post pictures um, on the classroom because on our class or in my backyard right now, um, if we, I was outside, I would show you personally. But I have these big corn and bean and squash plants that are growing all over my yard that are going to be harvested once the season is over in about October. So, what I like to do before I let these dry as well um, is I will roll them up. Um, and I should have told you this earlier, so I'll make sure to have a little note on there, is that um, I like to roll them in a little extra dirt here. And the way that you use these after they've dried out is you find a place that you want to plant them. So you want to plant them in a place that you know you can check on them again. Um, you don't want to place them in a place where maybe there's already natural plants growing there. Maybe, um, maybe you could try planting it in a big pot that you have already. Or you could plant it in a place in your backyard where there isn't much grass or anything growing. So you take this and then you're going to Put it, you can put it, dig a little hole, you don't even have to dig very far, but dig a little hole and put it in the hole and make sure you add water to it every day. Um, and you just keep checking on it, make sure it has water every day. And once the, um, once the plants start to get that water, because they have all the nutrients they have in this ball, they're going to start growing in that area. And you're going to have your own little personal mini garden. The other thing that you want to um, be mindful of is to not put too many of these really close together. Make sure you're giving like a foot at least apart, but I would say if you're walking around like a full long step. So you put one down and then you take a big step away from it and then you can dig a new hole there. The way I like to mark my uh, the way I like to mark where my plants are is I'll find some sticks that I like that I think look really cool and I'll just stick them in the ground right next to where those seeds are so then I know where I can go back and water. Um, you can maybe paint the stick colors that you like. Um, tell me how you think you can mark some where your plants are in your garden. Um, finally, what I would like for you all to do is I'm going to put some pictures of the plants. Um, in the in the Google Classroom and I'll make a little document so you all can look at this but I'm gonna give you all a challenge um, after you've made your seed pods and you've looked at the plants and what they are gonna look like when they're grown I want you to um, draw what you th imagine the three sisters looking like or some of the other plants that you have so make those plants and turn them into living people uh, maybe what you imagine the personality to be so like you're gonna have some onions that could be in your garden. What might onions look like if they were a person? Are they gonna be grumpy and maybe kind of spicy or are they gonna be something that is really warm and they're wholesome and they wanna give you hugs? So I'm gonna give you all that um, special challenge as we're coming towards the end of summer art camp. Um, I look forward to seeing what your seed balls look like and if you decide that you want to bring some of them in to share with WPCA, we'd be happy to take those. And once next spring comes around, we'll make sure to plant them in the garden so then your plants are going to be a part of our community garden. Thank you all very much and have a great day. See you next time.